Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. So the last 24 hours have been super exciting. We had a lot of news for The Bad Batch for Jedi Survivor and of course The Mandalorian Season 3. The final trailer was shown at CCXP but it's not been revealed publicly just yet. But we did get a release date of March the 1st 2023. But today my dear Maglorians, we have even more Star Wars news, some really exciting tidbits. We're going to talk about The Mandalorian in just a moment but let's begin with some Star Wars movie news. In light of reports that the 2025 film is soon going into pre-production, fans have been wondering, what is it going to be about? It's either Damon Lindelof's movie or that of Taika Waititi, but in any case there is now speculation that it's going to be set post Rise of Skywalker, because Daisy Ridley posted to her Instagram page that she had lunch at Lucasfilm headquarters on Thursday. She insisted nothing saucy is going on and that we shouldn't read into it, but that does come across as a bit suspicious. I mean sure, she knows people there, she's friends with them, and ultimately she was a big part of the franchise between 2015 and 2019, but I can't help but to feel that there's something more to that. Maybe a negotiation of sorts, or maybe preparing to return in the role of Rey. If this is the case, could the next Star Wars installment on the big screen, the 2025 movie, be set post episode 9? All just speculation, but let's keep an eye on this. Last night, the Indiana Jones 5 trailer was unveiled, the Dial of Destiny, and to be honest guys, in my opinion it looks amazing. One frame that got a lot of Star Wars fans and Indiana Jones fans alike talking is the de-aged Harrison Ford. Some of us are wondering if this could hint at more usage of Harrison Ford with a deepfake algorithm, more specifically on the Star Wars side of things in The Mandalorian. Could they use it for a de-aged Han Solo post-Return of the Jedi? He has no intention of returning to Star Wars, but as we know, he said this before. And the reality is, if the paycheck is fat enough, he might return to reprise the role. What do you guys think? Would you like to see Han Solo and Chewie in Mando? And so moving on my dear Maglorians, we have some more details that have emerged for The Mandalorian Season 3. A full description of the final trailer has been unveiled, we've not seen it publicly, but it was shown at CCXP and a few outlets caught on to it. This is from Collider and they say that the video begins with Grogu and Mando hearing the armor say You have removed your helmet. This was also in the first trailer by the way. They then note that Din and Grogu go to Mandalore to regain his honor. Meanwhile, once again we see Bo-Katan on her throne, but she looks annoyed and she mentions the Darksaber. We get more scenes confirming the return of Carl Weathers and of course Amy Sedaris. Now here's the big bit. There's a scene with a planet that looks a lot like Coruscant and the trailer features several action sequences, including a never before seen shot featuring Mando running away from TIE Fighters. They then say there's a scene with a scrapped Star Destroyer and the trailer ends with Grogu using the force against a new sort of monster, a new creature, and that moment was the most applauded in Brazil. Collider also say the glimpse of Coruscant is very brief, but it should be said they say the planet looks like Coruscant, it doesn't mean it necessarily is, it could be a lookalike, it might even be Hosnian Prime from The Force Awakens, or maybe even Chandrilla. And there is also a rumoured shot of Boba Fett himself. That is all we know my dear friends, but more Coruscant is always a good thing. Out of the recent Disney Plus shows, it looked the best in the Andal series, so hopefully they can make it look as magnificent in Mando. Now the only reason I can think of Coruscant appearing is Moff Gideon being in New Republic prison there. But bear in mind they did say a planet that looks like Coruscant. So next up in Star Wars updates, we're going to be talking about Solo A Star Wars Story. As you might be aware, Jonathan Kasdan, as well as the likes of NP's Nest actor Erin Kellyman and even Warwick Davis have been pushing for a second Solo movie. A lot of folks who worked on that film want Solo 2 to happen, and now one of the co-producers, Rob Bredow, encourages fans to demand a sequel from Lucasfilm. In an exclusive interview with ComicBook.com, this is what he said, I love that people want a sequel. Bring it. That's what we want to hear. I'd so much fun on Solo. And just a warning, he's about to talk about Willow. He says, we have a number of people who worked on this show. John Kasdan, Ron Howard, all of us love that world, love that team. I think it's happened before where the fans have brought things back, so I think it's really up to the fans what we do next. And when it comes to Solo, there is a big divide in opinion. Some fans want a part two, while others very much don't, and those fans show a lot of apathy. Solo co-writer Lawrence Kasdan was also present for the Bread Out interview and added the sequel is still very much a possibility. 
and he says between him, Jonathan Kasdan and Ron Howard, they still talk about Solo quite a lot and what they would do with the sequel. And Lawrence's son John is also eager to tell a new story using the same characters in Solo, more about Enfy's Nest, more Chewie, more Kira, more Solo, those kind of characters. And at Star Wars Celebration he admitted he was asking John Favreau to put some of those into the Mandoverse. Let's see if that ever happens, but let's get one thing straight, they're not delusional. Lawrence Kasdan even says a lot of things went wrong with Solo, as we know it lost a lot of money, and I think given a second chance if Solo 2 ever does happen, they're gonna keep that in mind and do things somewhat differently. These creatives, as well as Star Wars fans, did see the potential in some of the characters, and a handful of them are being explored in the comics. But one thing that can't be ignored is the bomb at the box office, making $393 million off a $275 million budget, making it not only a complete failure for Lucasfilm, but also one of the most expensive movies ever made. Now the most popular theory of why Solo failed is because of timing. The Last Jedi was only four months old at that point, and given backlash to that movie, fans didn't feel inspired to go see a spin-off about Han Solo. And at the time, it was a movie that many fans felt should never have been made, as it didn't leave much to the imagination. But four years on, opinion on the movies changed dramatically. It might have been a flop at the box office, and it's often berated for such, but along with Rogue One, it's ironically one of the Disney Star Wars movies that's aged the best, even compared to the sequels. And so now, my dear friends, we haven't talked about Star Wars Eclipse in some time, the upcoming Star Wars Quantic Dream game. It's not expected until 2026, but David Cage opened up and said it's the most ambitious game that they've ever done with the studio. This is from IGN Japan, and they say the following, Quantic Dream is hard at work on Star Wars Eclipse, a new adventure game set in the High Republic of Star Wars. The golden age of the Jedi, 200 years before the birth of Anakin Skywalker. While a lavish teaser trailer paints a thrilling picture of the game setting, that was just the cinematic trailer and not the actual gameplay. So during a recent interview with G-Star in South Korea, director, writer and Quantic Dream founder David Cage told IGN the following, It's the most ambitious project of our studio. He wouldn't go into any specifics of the game, but he did make it clear it's going to be very different from Detroit's Become Human, which was a Quantic Dream release from 2018. The controversial founder said, We spent a lot of time trying to imagine our world 10, 15, 20 years from now. What would technology be like? And Star Wars itself is more sci-fi. It's a very different setting. It's far, far away as you know, so it's something that's going to be very different. He says he hopes it's going to be the most well-received game, claiming it's going to be the most accomplished game they've ever done. As I say, my dear friends, the game is very far away and isn't going to drop for another few years. There are rumours stating that the game is also going to connect to the Acolyte, which is also set at the end of the High Republic era. And so finally, my dear friends, in case you missed it, we got the cover reveal yesterday for Jedi Battle Scars, the novel that connects to Fallen Order and the sequel to it, Jedi Survivor. And so with that said, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of today's Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and if you want more videos not found here on YouTube, then click the link down there in the description. But until the next one, guys, may the Force be with you always.